Emert International proudly presents the Trucking Job of the Year entry for the Specialized Carriers and Rigging Association. Emert International was approached to determine the feasibility of transporting power generation equipment from the Port at Texas Terminal in Houston to Granbury, Texas. One of the components for the new plant was a combustion turbine which had dimensions of 35 feet long by 17 feet wide by 20 feet tall and weighed 668,000 pounds. Determining the feasibility for transporting the turbine 385 miles proved to be a challenging process for Emmert International. To accommodate the transportation, Emmert looked at various options. Railing the piece was not feasible because of several existing overhead obstructions. To overcome each of the obstructions along the rail line, it meant that the turbine would have to be loaded on rail, transported to the given obstruction, offloaded, transported on land around the obstruction, and then reloaded back onto the rail line. Not only did the process seem cumbersome, it was also questionable whether one could still achieve axle loadings for conventional trailers when traveling around the obstructions on the rail line. As a result, Emmert began evaluating transportation concepts by reviewing a trailer system that would accommodate axle loadings and also be able to maneuver through a route from Houston to Granbury. Given the weight of the turbine, it would be difficult to achieve the necessary axle and bridge loadings with conventional trailer systems. Therefore, some of Emmert International's existing dolly and beam transport systems were analyzed to see if they could support the weight of the turbine and also meet axle requirements for the state of Texas. After some review, it was quite apparent that none of Emmert's existing transport systems had the capacity to carry such a load. Nonetheless, engineers at Emmert International determined that some of the existing dolly transport components could be utilized. However, it would require the fabrication of new main carrying beams and weight distribution beams in order to accommodate the weight of the turbine. Modifying Emmert's existing equipment meant re-evaluating the capacity of the transport system, axle loading requirements, turning radius capabilities, and modularization of the components. It was imperative that the trailer have sufficient capacity to support the weight of the turbine, but also, at the same time, have the mobility to maneuver around tight corners. The engineers at Emmert International focused on several areas. First, they looked at what would be required for a steel beam trailer frame to support the massive weight of the turbine. This included analyzing the main carrying beams, cross beams, and other support beams for the main trailer section. Calculations were performed to determine just how large the main carrying beams would be. To accommodate the weight of the turbine, the beams would have to be 124 feet long and the middle section would have to taper to a height of 7 feet. Since the beams were too large to transport by conventional trucking methods at that size, they had to be modular in nature so they could be taken apart and shipped as separate legal truckloads. Not only did the main carrying beams have to be modular, all of the remaining transport system needed to be modular as well. The main carrying beams were attached to cross beams which stabilized the lateral movement of the beams. The main carrying beams and cross beams form the main trailer, or H section. The cross beam on the front end of the main carrying beam was mounted on a turntable which was supported by a ball socket. The ball socket would be sufficient in size to serve as the main contact point and support mechanism for the front of the transport system. The rear crossbeams were attached to a rocking turntable. However, on the rear portion of the trailer, each turntable was placed on the outer portion of the trailer. The front and rear points on the crossbeams would serve as the basis for the trailer's three-point suspension. This suspension would enable the trailer to accommodate lateral loads when negotiating turns. In order to transfer the weight of the cargo and the main trailer frame, 10 walking beams were placed under the H section. The walking beams would be utilized to evenly distribute the weight of the entire load on top of 20 of Emmert International's 70-ton hydraulic highway dollies. The placement of the walking beams in order to distribute the weight of the transport system would be crucial for legalizing the axle weight for the overall trailer combination. In addition to the 20 dollies under the walking beams, two additional dollies were placed under the support steel or bed beams which served as the support base for the turbine. These two additional dollies would be required at all major bridge crossings. 
In total, the transport system would utilize a total of 22 Emert International hydraulic highway dollies. In order to elevate the load when traveling down the roadway, several hydraulic jacking rams were utilized in various locations on the transport system. Each of the Emert International dollies maintained a 160-ton jack within the dolly frame that could be elevated to a height of 14 inches in order to raise the transport system. The ball socket on top of the dolly jack ram provided the rotation of the dolly around the contact point. Therefore, each section of dollies under each walking beam could be steered independently to accommodate turning. An additional 14 inches of elevation for the transport system was also achieved by installing three 600-ton hydraulic jacks at each of the turntable contact points under the H section. To accommodate maneuvering of the transport system, Emert International designed a hydraulic steering system which was outfitted on all of the dollies. In addition to the hydraulic steering system, the front group of dollies could be steered in one direction while the rear group of dollies could be steered in the opposite direction. In essence, the transport system could spin around a center axis. The ability to spin the transport system coupled with the new hydraulic dolly steering system ensured the maneuverability of the trailer. After evaluating a preliminary trailer design, the staff at Emert began to identify potential routes for overland transportation. Representatives from the Texas Department of Transportation worked with members of Emert International to ensure that a mutually agreed upon route would be achieved. Both Emert and the Texas DOT worked on several routing variations over a 10-month period. A route was identified that would take the turbine out of the port at Texas Terminal and through the Houston city limits traveling northeast on Route 90 toward Dayton, Texas. After reaching Dayton, the route would transition northwest through College Station and Waco toward Granbury. The route would require many improvements. However, it was feasible for the transport system, which was as long as a football field, to maneuver from Houston to Granbury. After the Texas Department of Transportation agreed to the routing, Emmert's final trailer design and routing were submitted to the state for bridge and pavement analysis. Never before in the state of Texas had a dolly transport system of this size and magnitude been allowed on the streets. Before Emmert International was able to commence with the move, a series of route improvements would be required. Members from Emmert International traveled the route with various subcontractors and identified all route improvements that would be required to negotiate all of the difficult areas. On US-67, a bridge crossing over the Paluxy River, the installation of steel bridge plates was required to strengthen and reinforce the bridge girders. In total, over 30 improvements were made along the route which required a combination of excavation, backfilling, compacting, matting, and plating. After obtaining route approval, Emmert International began to mobilize the transport system to the Port of Houston. 25 trucks were mobilized to ship each of the transport system's modular components. Upon arrival at the port, Emmert International utilized two cranes at the construction site. One crane offloaded the trucks as they arrived, and another, larger crane was utilized to assemble the components. Upon building the transport system, Emmert was now ready to receive the turbine. Two cranes lifted the turbine to a sufficient height for loading purposes and Emmert skillfully maneuvered the transport system into position to receive the load. Once in the transport system, Emmert prepped the turbine for its 385-mile journey. All of the hydraulic dollies were plumbed, the load was chained and secured, and three all-wheel drive prime movers were attached to the transport system. Front and rear police escorts would be required throughout the move. Movement of the turbine would only be allowed during daylight hours and no weekend travel and was also restricted in Houston during the morning and evening rush hours. All utility, railroad and traffic agencies had been contacted by Emmert International and given a transportation plan. Evaluation of the transportation plan would allow each of the agencies to analyze the impact of the forthcoming move. In addition, it would be the responsibility of Emmert to provide updates during the turbine movement for each of the agencies. Notifications had been submitted and it was now time to commence with the transportation process. At approximately 9 a.m., the turbine left from the Jacinto Port Road and traveled along the Sam Houston Parkway. Police, bucket trucks, escorts, and service trucks traveled with the load as it moved down the road. 
After traveling for 20 miles, the first leg of the journey was completed within two hours. Due to travel restrictions, the load was then staged in Dayton, Texas until the next day. After staying the night, the entourage was assembled and once again the turbine was on the road. On the second day, the load would only travel 36 miles, however it was imperative to get an early start. Four turns with minimal clearance would be negotiated and special requirements for the last turn at the intersection of Route 1485 and Highway 494 were necessary. All of the traffic and railroad signals at this intersection would have to be removed for clearances. As the load successfully maneuvered around the last turn, crews went to work replacing all of the signage. Not only was the signage replaced in a timely manner, Emmert was also able to meet the last requirement for the day, which was to have the turbine parked in a staging area before the local elementary school was let out for the day. On the third afternoon, the turbine had reached Conroe. The transport system was averaging 40 to 50 miles per day. However, in tight turns, the turbine moved slowly as the crews from Emmert utilized the hydraulic steering system on the dollies to negotiate the tight corners. Special considerations were required when negotiating bridges with the transport system. When performing a bridge crossing, no other traffic was allowed on the bridge. The transport system was also required to be centered on the bridge and was restricted from utilizing the bridge shoulders. No stopping, starting, or shifting was allowed on the bridge in order to maintain a constant speed during the crossing. On specified bridges, Emmert International was also required to place additional dollies under the load to meet the necessary bridge engineering requirements. After leaving Conroe, the route proceeded along State Highway 6 to Waco and across Interstate 35 toward Granbury, Texas. Crews from Emmert International skillfully maneuvered the transport system along the route. As representatives from Emmert moved ahead of the load to inspect the route, a bridge was encountered that was being worked on by a local construction crew. Unfortunately, half of the bridge deck had been removed after the transportation permits were issued and it appeared that further analysis on the bridge would be required by the Texas Department of Transportation. There was sufficient width for the transport system to make it across the bridge. However, clearances were less than four inches in some areas where the bridge deck had been removed. After performing additional calculations, it was determined that the bridge still maintained sufficient structural integrity for the turbine crossing. Before negotiating the bridge, Emmert International worked with the construction crews to relocate all of the barricades and signage that were posted for the bridge construction. Removal of the signs provided a clear path and allowed Emmert to align the transport system for the bridge crossing. To reduce traffic congestion, Emmert was required to cross the bridge after midnight and be completed with the crossing by 6 a.m. Once the signs were out of the way, the turbine slowly moved across the bridge. With minimal clearances, the 298-foot-long transport system successfully made it across the bridge. As soon as the transport system cleared the bridge, all of the existing signage was put back into position and the turbine continued on with the final leg of its journey. After 12 days, the turbine arrived at Granbury and was driven into the new power plant. Emmert positioned the transporters so that two hydraulic cranes could be utilized to lift the turbine out of the transport system. The turbine was de-lashed from the transport system and the crane's rigging was attached to the lifting lugs. Soon the turbine was lifted out of the transport system and placed on dunnage. Emmert was then able to move the transport system to a staging area and commence with the disassembly of the trailer. A crane was utilized to remove the modular transport system components from the main section of the trailer and position them on the ground. A second crane was utilized to load out the components onto trailers for demobilization. Beginning on January 28th, with a gross weight of over 1 million pounds, Emmert International had transported the turbine a total of 385 miles and successfully delivered it to the customer by February 8th. Over the course of the 12-day journey, there were no injuries, no damage to equipment, and no delays. Overall Dimensions Length, 298 feet. Width, 19 feet, 10 inches. Height, 18 feet, 6 inches. Gross weight, 1,080,000 pounds. Permits and approvals. Texas Department of Transportation. State of Texas Bridge Department approval. State of Texas Pavement Department approval. Four Texas State District Transportation Offices. 
four Texas State Signal Divisions, 10 city municipalities, 12 county municipalities, six power utility companies, six telephone companies, physical elements encountered, 90 degree turns, railroad track crossings, traffic control devices, overhead wires, 6% grades, road width restrictions, bridge construction, shoring of bridges, planning the job, five month permitting process, 1,280 hours of engineering, 2,020 hours of planning and coordination. Safety considerations, pilot cars, height sticks, radio communications, police escorts, traffic control plans, daily equipment checklists. Execution, 1,152 man hours. Ingenuity and innovations, modifying existing dolly and beam trailer to meet new transport needs. Invert lifting jacks inside trailer beams to elevate load. Utilize dollies on bed beams to meet bridge loading requirements. Loss prevention, no accidents, no injuries, no property damage, no loss of time, no cargo damage, no incidents.